I'm Stuart and I'm the owner of Your Car Haggler and I wanna be your car haggler. I'm a licensed auto broker, helping you save time, money, and the aggravation involved when it comes to buying a car and all of the games that come with it. These videos are all about information and education so you can be better prepared to buy a vehicle, but better yet, have me help and be your car haggler. Let's go. I'm all for consumers having as much knowledge as possible to make sure that they're making informed and educated decisions. I stumbled across this video and it looks like it's going pretty well. Um, it looks like she was also in the auto industry for a long time as a finance manager. Um, I personally was not a finance manager, but I did run credit. Um, I did sell products for the finance managers. Her video is about dealership finance managers hate when you know these six things. So let's see what she has to say. See See if I agree with it, what I don't. Um, it's the first time I've watched this, so we'll see what happens. Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly and welcome to Auto Finance Sense, where I help you make sense of the dealership finance office the next time you buy a car. Let's get started. Today I'm going to let you in on a little secret of six things that a finance manager hates to hear you say. Are you ready? Okay. Number one, I'm paying cash. So. Why does the finance manager rub his temples whenever he hears those dreaded words, I'm paying cash? Well, it's pretty simple. Most finance managers make the bulk of their money from finance deals. First, they generate income from the reserve, also known as yield spread, which is the difference between buy rate and sell rate. But the biggest reason is that the opportunity to present and sell additional optional products to you in terms of payment is lost. To many people, seeing the benefits wrapped into payments is... She is absolutely correct about not necessarily being lost, but making it harder. A finance manager is always going to try their best to get you to commit to some sort of aftermarket product that they might not have as good of an opportunity or high of a chance to sell you that product. They may not mark up their warranty the full $1,500, $1,600. They might mark it up a thousand and then know that they need to reduce it. Um, a finance manager is definitely always more on edge when uh, you tell them that you're paying cash, but I'm not sure what dealership has it set up where the first person to find out you're paying cash is the finance manager. Um, typically a finance manager in my experience is never going to be mad at you they're going to still pretend to be your best friend oh you're paying cash okay opposite that's that's great that's not a problem now are you taking the money um out of a, a personal account are you taking out of an investment account you know where's the cash coming from oh we're getting it from our credit union oh okay what's what's the rate that you're getting it from your bank oh okay i could probably beat that i also don't think the first time a finance manager is going to hear that a person is paying cash is directly from the customer themselves, typically that information would always come from the salesperson because the salesperson is always going to ask the customer how they're paying. Are you planning on financing, paying cash, leasing? The looks will definitely go to the salesperson. Uh, the amount of times uh, Corny uh, would, would just freak out when you brought him a cash deal, complain about how he has more than all of the other finance managers, all two of them combined, how he always has more cash deals than everybody else, how he gets screwed. Um, <laughs> So it, it, the finance manager is gonna freak out, but it's not gonna be to the customer. I'm sure there are some finance managers that are gonna be more grumpy towards a cash buyer, but typically in my experience, the finance manager is going to be more than your best friend if you're paying cash because they need to schmooze you a lot more to get you to come out of pocket that extra money. Not sure where she's going from here. I'm gonna shut up, we'll keep playing it. Much more digestible, but that's a great advantage to the finance manager. Now, I've had more than a few people say to me, well, Kimberly, I always pay cash for my cars. So why does the finance manager fight so hard to want to finance me, even if it's at 0%? Control. Well, this is why. Your cash deal turns into a payment presentation. Yep. And this is also why I teach that if you're going to finance with a dealership and you don't see the actual price of the products on the menu, then you ask the finance manager to write that price yeah. next to each benefit but shown. We could also make up it's numbers. It's the average buyer That's what that we shops did. without all the numbers being fully transparent, and that's not you. There's also a psychology at play here too. So for example, 
On cash deals, some finance managers will set the prices of each product so that the final lump sum payment at the bottom of each column on the menu shows a round figure. Our brains have a much easier time. It's why time something is nineteen ninety nine versus twenty dollars. Psychology. Than an odd number with some change, therefore making it easier to write a check. Number two, the finance manager hates it whenever you say, uh, "Let me phone a friend." Let's say that you're going over the menu and there are a couple of products on there that interest you a little bit, and then you say, "Well." Let me get my spouse on the phone. You know, he or she, they, they know more about this than I do. Or my friend is really good with this stuff. So let me call him or her real quick and see what they have to say. She's absolutely right. Typically, if there is gonna be a third base coach, we would call them. Um, we would already have had that information ahead of time and a good salesperson would relay that information to the finance manager. So when I would say to Corny that, you know, they've been texting or calling somebody and asking their opinion, he's gonna have that in the back of his head. Now, when I sold cars, I believe I did a very thorough transfer to the finance manager. I told them about their trade. I told them the condition. Um, I told them psychological things that they could use against the consumer. Like, you know, they mentioned having to do work in their car or they mentioned not wanting to have this car a long time. So maybe you don't pitch the warranty as hard as you do the bundle. Everything is psychological uh, in the car industry and it's feeding into those emotions. They say, I forgot how many yeses there are to the sale. Um, that was something that always got preached was you want to be positive. I would like to think most of the time the finance manager may already know that there is going to be a third party involved. That was me personally always making sure that my finance manager knew that there could be somebody on the other end. And in my case, I am the other person on that other end. So when my folks are in finance, they will be texting me, they want this much for this, they want this much for that. And I'll be like, yeah, no. Um, if you see the value in it, you know, tell them you want it for this much and maybe you settle here. I like what she's saying so far, let's keep going. Well, unless the person on the other end of that phone has had a positive experience with one of these products, that's generally gonna be a loud, no, don't buy any of that stuff. Good and finance manager that can talk through that. person won't know what to say and feel a little put on the spot and then turn the phone over to a different person. Now, obviously this is going to frustrate the finance manager. Oh yeah. They've lost a sale to someone that they didn't get to explain the benefits to. And or then they curse about that person work. as soon as you However, walk out of the room. However, here's the thing. I wouldn't want you, the buyer, to hand over your decision-making power, your knowledge, your control to someone because you're feeling like you don't know what you're doing. If you feel the need to phone a friend, I would put that person on speakerphone so that you, your I don't friend, know if she offers the finance services, manager, but in that case it would can be me, and I've and talked to finance managers this before. This puts the finance manager in the hot seat in case you don't have a second set of ears physically sitting next to you the whole time. They hate For being example, caught off guard. You might be in the position where gap coverage could be very beneficial to you. Well, I would want you to know the questions that you should ask regarding gap and negotiate the price. You See my video on gap, states, the link is in the can. description box below. Number three, finance hates to hear. I'm putting down a large down payment. Yes and no. You see, the more you finance, the more money is made by the finance manager. If they're marking now, up the some rate. some banks will have a minimum amount of finance, True. and that might be $5,000, $7,500, $10,000. But if the finance manager is, let's say, marking the buy rate up from 6% to 7%, or eight. well, $20,000 amount financed will make them more money than $10,000 amount Math is financed. math, yeah. Now, if this is a subvented loan, like a 2.9 from the manufacturer and no markup can be made, then the finance manager will get paid something called a flat. Yep, as low as $50 and that could or $100. And be anywhere from like $100 to $300 or so. Sometimes some it's a percentage of the loan. some lenders make that flat payout according to the amount financed. And once again, $10,000 is going to pay less than $20,000. So each lender is different. A 72-month, $40,000 amount finance loan with a marked-up buy rate pays a lot more than a 36-month, $10,000 loan at buy rate. 
There's actually a fine line between that, psychological reasons, um, mind games. If somebody is unsure about putting down five, 10, 15 grand, what you can actually do is, so let's say the amount of the vehicle after fees and taxes is 40 grand. We're just gonna use a nice round number and the customer is debating between putting down five, 10, 15 grand down. Now you can set the finance manager up really well. Let's just say hypothetically a payment's $700 at 60 months and the customer then wants to put down the five grand that lowers their payment about $100 a month. So yes, now they're taking money out of the amount that they're gonna be financing, but a smart salesperson and finance manager team will basically take that five grand that they're putting down and now put it into products or have them put 10 grand down and put five grand worth of products in. You can very much manipulate the down payment to their total payment. So if a customer decides that they don't want any of the products, maybe the finance manager then talks them to putting less money down. But the finance manager on the other end of that, like I said, could say, well, why don't we have you put 10 grand down and you'll get these coverages, we'll go 66 months and look at how much cheaper your payment is than what you initially thought and boom, you've got a $3,500 back end deal and they're happy. So let's keep going. Number four, the finance manager hates to hear, I'm already approved at yeah. my credit union for yeah. X amount interest rate and X amount term. Now, because they want to do the financing means you've already gone through the application process at your credit union and you have a solid approval in your hands or in your email on your phone. Yep. Not that you are pre-qualified or pre-approved. That's a lot of capital one does finance that. Finance managers can be pretty successful at overcoming that objection. See my previous video where I went over pre-qualifications and pre-approvals. Big difference. Having a solid approval usually comes along with you, the buyer, saying something to the effect of, I know my credit well, I stay on top of it. So now, most finance managers are going to work hard to try and convert you yep. from your credit union to their financing <laughs> at a higher by rate offering these to days. match or beat their rate and term. Also, by letting them know that you know your credit well, you've pretty much made it clear to them that you are a savvy buyer in control of your finances. Not always. But if but you don't allow the, the finance manager there. the opportunity to try and beat your credit union, then it's just a cash deal for them. Correct. Okay, number five. Makes it harder to sell products. The finance manager hates it when you say, I think I'll take my time and call other manufacturer dealerships and ask the finance manager what their prices are on that some products because never happened. I know that they ever, don't have them too. Ever, ever, ever. People so would ask, tire can I buy this later? Service but they would never say, I'm going to call West Herb or, or Basil be, when I'm sitting with them in North Town and say, I'm going to shop your, your price. Think about it, do your research, and shop around. Now, the finance manager may try and overcome this objection by saying, well, you know, you're going to have to pay for those products outside of your loan and probably have to put them on a credit card. But you already know that. Again, you're not the average buyer here. You're smart. Once you know the right questions to ask about each product, which are in my other product videos, then you can call four or five other manufacturer dealerships in your area or in your state, tell the receptionist that you want to buy an extended warranty. That way you'll get directly through to the finance manager because they me. don't often like to take phone calls. Because I sell warranties. And let them know what you have. Be prepared with your VIN and how many miles are on your car currently. And just say, by the way, I'm calling four other manufacturer dealerships, so give me your best price. Actually, the, the only time you can easily get a finance manager on the phone is when you want to buy something, when, when you want to cancel. No, actually, <laughs> you should do that for them. Call them and say, I want to buy a warranty um, if you need to cancel your warranty. So call in, pretend you want to buy a warranty, get to the finance manager that you bought the warranty from. And then, yeah, I, I just want to cancel my warranty. And, and they'll be like, wait, I thought you wanted to buy it. You'd be like, no, they must have misheard me. So use it against them. <laughs> My point here is that if there's something that you feel fits your life and your driving habits and the protection makes sense to you, then this is the way 
a good this way. This is the way. To open the door to negotiating a much better and fair price. Some states, right I don't believe there. you can actually negotiate Remember, a warranty. The finance manager I think Florida needs might be one. you for their pay plan. Yep. And they want to do business with you. Of course. You've heard me say this before in my other videos that, with the exception of forced front end ads such as theft and nitro, oh, shoot. products in a manufacturer dealership finance office are not bad products. Uh, it's just up to the finance manager as to how much they mark those products up. And that's just too darn high. Number six, the finance manager hates it whenever you walk in or call and say, I want to cancel those products that I well, bought. Yeah, nobody you wants you to cancel about 30 something days you sell ago them. Or so, and maybe the finance manager talked That's you into buying some products common that sense, but you yeah. didn't do your research on first. And then you get home and you realize that all these products add up to over $4,000 on your loan. <laughs> so yep. you go back in and you say... Easily. That's why they show you a mind. payment. I don't want all of this on my loan. Now they have to sell it I to you again. I want to cancel these. So why does the finance manager hate it when you say Charge this? Chargeback. Because if you cancel your products within a certain period of time, like 60 or 90 days, the money that he or she made on those time. products gets sucked right back out from the golden pot of finance money from which they get paid. Yep. And that's called a chargeback. Hey. Now, depending on when you cancel these products, the finance manager might sit on that cancellation until the next month. <laughs> do be aware, though, that when you cancel we didn't do that in Northtown Toyota. We just loan, took three weeks to call you that back. That amount most of money times. will come off the principal amount of your loan, so you will owe that much less. True. But your payment will stay the same. True. The loan contract is not rewritten. So be if sure you that you read the cancellation cancel things clause within in your specific a very product quick amount contract. of time and it's not funded, As it a could side note, kind of be rewritten. When a finance rewritten. manager tells you that there's no prepayment penalty on your loan, but you can't refinance it or pay it off for 90 days or That's six bl months or whatever time they give you, Don't know then if I can it's curse very important that you much. say, okay, circle where it states that for me or highlight Boom. it. Boom. Love that. On the bank contract so that I can see it clearly. Because it won't. Unless there is a specific document here between you and the dealership regarding this, when a lender does not have a prepayment penalty, and most do not, but you always ask, that means that you can put additional money on principal at any time or pay that loan off in full at any time you'd like. The finance manager simply wants you to keep that loan for a certain period of time so that they don't get hit with that chargeback. Ding, ding, Charge ding. Chargebacks are not only from the cancellation of products, but they also come from the money that is made between the buy rate and the sell rate, yeah. also known as reserve or yield spread. So there you go. There are six things that a finance manager hates to hear in uh, the, the dealership thought behind all of it is absolutely correct um she definitely knows what she's talking about she's not somebody that just decided to start making uh car dealership car f and i uh information but i liked it that's pretty awesome content